All right, let's go seeking confusion. So I gave you the sequence diagram and I told you that there should be some sequence of function calls that would lead to a type confusion. So what is the sequence? Well, first the attacker would call nt user console control. That would call into win32u and that would call in kernel space xxx console control. Now, although there's extra code here, the only relevant bit that we care about is the fact that it causes an allocation in the kernel desktop space. And on the kernel heap, it's going to pass back the offset and put that into the p extra bytes. And then it's going to set this bit 11 in dw extra flag consequently saying you should interpret this p extra bytes as an offset instead of a pointer. So again, kernel heap offset there, set the type to be interpreted as a kernel heap, heap offset, and fundamentally that is the core and the crux of the confusion because when it called into this function here, the xxx create window, and then it called back to user space, it's expecting that this user space allocator is going to allocate it some user space heap data and pass back a pointer. So basically this code is written in the context of user space pointers, but yet the attacker by hijacking this function caused some other function to be called, which causes a flip of the type, sets this bit field, and that says, okay, now the type is actually properly interpreted as a heap offset and other code elsewhere that checks this flag is going to treat it as a kernel heap offset, even though this function, which is not yet fully returned yet. So to be clear, this is calling into here and then this is calling something different. This is not returned back to this control flow yet, but when it does, it's going to expect that it had gotten a pointer to a user space allocation. All right, then the attacker calls nt callback return, and that is the thing that is supposed to end this user space callback. And they get to choose a completely arbitrary attacker controlled value, and that will be passed into kernel space. So this is now the actual return from this function right here. So boom, we're looking at that. And that is the assignment that occurs. So it is attacker controlled value into the tagwin tagwin k p extra bytes field. So that is now acid. So what can an attacker do with that now that that is acid and there's this confusion going on about the proper interpretation of the p extra bytes? All right, so now once this function returns, the attacker from their malicious application can call some completely different function. And what are they going to call? Well, in this case, of the functions that I gave you, I mean, they could obviously call anything, but of the functions I gave you, if you had selected destroy window, which calls into xxx destroy window in kernel space, what you would see is that it would subsequently call into xxx free window. And inside of there, there is an if tagwind tagwind k dw extra has the bit 11 set, then call a free on that completely attacker controlled offset plus base. So it treats it as an offset. So now all of a sudden what we've got is something that looks like an acid free. And we know from previous sections that an acid free can lead to a use after free. And so I don't, you know, because this is just pseudocode and I haven't, you know, gone through and reverse engineered everything, I'll just say that I think this might be more like a sassy free. So this, you know, if it was a truly acid free, then, you know, if this function would allow for freeing anything anywhere in all of kernel space, then I would call it an acid free. I'm going to call it a sassy free because at a minimum, we at least know that you can free anything that is, you know, based at this, you know, kernel base that's being used for this quote unquote desktop heap for these, you know, allocations of Windows graphical user interface stuff. So we know for sure we can free anything that is on that particular heap. I don't know necessarily whether we can free anything anywhere in the system, but that still seems like that would be able to lead to a use after free because all of a sudden something just disappears out from underneath something and then that can be reallocated with attacker controlled values potentially. Now this is not actually how it got exploited. They didn't actually use a use after free, but again, I was just simplifying this all down to show you something that, you know, is true. This could lead to a use after free and is in the context of what we know based on you know earlier sections in this class. So what did the pseudocode look like for this vulnerable version? Well, it basically had the xxx client alloc windows class extra bytes being immediately assigned to the p extra bytes. So that immediate assignment was the problem because now this attacker controlled value came in and was assigned to this thing that was type confused at this point. Now, what is the fix for this? 
Well, instead of doing an immediate assignment, they assigned it to a local variable instead. So they just held it in a local variable. They assigned that local variable to another one, or at least the decompiled version thinks it did. It checks, you know, if that value that came back from user space is non-zero, then go in and check some things. So there were existing checks in the code, like is window being destroyed? We don't care about that because that was already there. Uh, there was this other check that was already there. What we're really going to care about is there's this assignment of zero to variable 243. And then there is a check that says if p extra bytes not equal to that v243, so not equal to zero. So if p extra bytes not equal to zero, then go to label 481, right? So if p extra bytes not equal to zero, go to 481. So if the attacker had played that game by calling nt user console control in between when this called into user space and when it got returned from user space, if they played that game, then p extra bytes would not be equal to zero because that nt user console control did a kernel based allocation and assigned that to p extra bytes. So if the attacker played their game, then it would be not equal to zero. You would jump to label 481 at this point. Now, the reason why that would defend against this attack is because the actual assignment into the p extra bytes that the attacker was keying in on here to get their fully attacker controlled user mode adder passed into p extra bytes that occurs here so by jumping to label 481 at this point you're completely skipping over the assignment so there is not the assignment of acid to p extra bytes it goes down here and it does other stuff so that is sort of the the core fix here and you know that looks good to me basically it says you know hey if this thing all of a sudden just magically it was initialized to zero and now i called into user space and i called came back and it is not equal to zero without me having ever assigned it well, that seems bad, so let's just error out. So that seems good. And then the other little interesting bit here is you can see there's this other extra change which calls to Microsoft telemetry assert triggered no args km kernel mode. And so basically this seems like it's saying, okay, well, but even if this thing was zero, if all of a sudden for some magical reason this hex 800 was set, this bit 11 was set in the DW extra flags field, then that is also suspicious. Now, in this case, it just calls this trigger of a telemetry function. So that's going to record some information and potentially send it to Microsoft, but then it just falls through and it's still going to do the assignment. So putting that in the sequence diagram, what it looks like instead is that now here, instead of just immediately returning the thing to p extra bytes, it puts it in a returned value. And then down here, it's going to check if p extra bytes is not equal to zero, then error out. And if dw extra flag has the bit 11 set, then do some telemetry. And if and only if, you know, these cases, so basically if you didn't hit this, then you will fall through to this and assign the attacker controlled value. Now, if you happen to know that this Microsoft telemetry assert triggered no args km just collects information and then falls through, you might think to yourself that actually there is a control flow path here where if p extra bytes is equal to zero, then you know this you could pass this thing, you'd go to the next line, you'd still have this equal to having the 800 set, and then it would call this and then it would go down here. So basically you might think that if this thing returns zero for p extra bytes, then there is still a path to win here. But if you go back and look at the full code for this XXX console control, you'll see that actually if this returns zero, then it errors out and it never actually assigns it to this p extra bytes. So as of right now, you know, as of when Microsoft, you know, did this initial patch, there wasn't a way to thread the needle and have this equal to zero and still fall through and still get attacker controlled value here. So this was a adequate fix.